In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a realistic Starship recreation in Kerbal Space Program 2, and hopefully one that goes a bit better than the real launch. Starting off, the extra large cargo bay nose cone. Paint this black to somewhat replicate the look of the heat tiles, and then grab the largest extra large fuel tank. Offset this ever so slightly, and directly underneath that, place another one. Paint the one on top black and the one beneath metallic by making the paint completely transparent. Then offset the lower one into upper one. Because we slightly offset the previous tank, the two won't try to share the same space and you get a nice dual tone tank. One side with heat tiles, the other plain or steel. This will make the vessel very heavy, but sometimes we have to make sacrifices in the name of beauty. Repeat this underneath, as was shown, with the smallest extra large cargo bay for the boat tail to cover the engines. Then, guidance. I placed a large probe core, large battery, large monopropellant tank, four RTGs for power, and a large adapter to a medium docking port all within the nose. This will allow me to fly, and hopefully maneuver too. Next up, the engines. To replicate the three C-level Raptors, I used swivels and for the vacuum optimized ones, vectors. I felt it looked somewhat right, and vectors are really quite tasty. This vessel can fly and reach orbit with both fuel tanks filled, but for this video, I emptied one of them. That sure is a lot of dry mass added for almost no reason. Not quite finally, the actuators. I said this was a realistic starship. Maybe accurate looking would have been the better words to use, because one, this will actually get to space and not rudge shortly after separation, and two, with no robotics in Kerbal Space Program 2, I had to just use wings. Barbaric, I know. Using the largest wings available and resizing them to the correct proportions I found worked better than using control surfaces or smaller wings, because when attempting landings with them, they didn't get ripped off, which is, you know, quite nice. To be able to turn this in space and not have to wait several years in order for it to do so, the next stage of the build is to place linear RCS ports in as many different places as you possibly can. Within reason, of course, because we still want this to look like Starship and not Pimple Rocket 9000. This is why we have the monopropellant tank in the nose, to fuel these little additions. Also, something, something, header tank, center of pressure, good, no flip. In order to mask their appearance as much as possible, I did colour the RCS ports the same as the tank, as they are being placed on. Mmm, classic blend. Finish this off with some well-hidden RCS pods to give you forwards and backwards control. Now for the last part of the orbiter, actual starship, and just a bit of detailing here. Wrapping around the heat tiles onto the steel side of the craft using some black structural panels to emulate the look. This was quite finicky, and a major ball ache to do. Having to switch down to no symmetry at times and place them individually as the panels would be the wrong way on the other side. Here seems to be a good place to mention that if you want this exact craft yourself, it's going straight up onto my Patreon. I'd recommend it, it flies really nice and doesn't look half bad. I do have multiple other craft files on there too for both KSP2 and 1. If you like the sound of that, link now or in the description. I will also mention now that this first Starship build, yes there is another one coming, is going to be completely stock. You can do this exactly as the game intended with no mods required. The second one later will be using a couple of mods to add grid fins, but if you don't want to mod the game, this build will work too. Finally, onto Super Chuck Heavy. The first stage that in real life is twice as powerful as the Saturn V. First off, and this is very important, and if anyone from SpaceX is listening, this part is absolutely crucial, the decoupler. Yes, because unlike real life, we want Starship to separate from Super Heavy, so it can, you know, make it to orbit. <coughs> Underneath this, an extra large probe core, which I forgot to place originally, and then two of the largest extra large tanks stacked on top of each other. Super heavy being rather plain is quite easy to paint. Full transparency here. No, I've not been dishonest before. Just make sure that your paint tool is set to fully transparent. To replicate the structure at the bottom in four-way symmetry, place three of the largest small-sized fuel tanks with a small nose cone on top and offset them into the main tank. Now for the engines. 19 vectors should suffice. I did use Lux's OAB extensions to place these easily, but this can also be done in stock with a little bit more time. Vectors here are not ideal. I'd much rather use swivels as they are what I used for the sea level raptors on Starship, but 33 swivels was some way off being able to lift this. So vectors will have to do for now, until the modded build anyway. I didn't mention it as I placed them, but four vernier RCS pods at the top of the booster have been placed in a somewhat vain attempt at providing attitude control if you want to turn this around and try and land it at one of the four pads. Okay, time to launch, and one thing that I forgot to mention, well, I did place them on this starship, was make sure that you strut the top and the bottom together. Because, of course, it's Kerbal Space Program 2, and if you don't do that, then the entire thing is going to flip, flop, and wobble all over the place, a little bit like the actual launch. But no, we don't really want that to be happening, and as you may be able to see from this launch anyway, it is a little bit wonky as is. So definitely, this creation has not got enough struts. This is something that I will fix in the next iteration of this 
design that I will be showing, the one that we'll be using Moz to make this look even more like a real Starship rather than, you know, just your general generic average stock KSP2 Starship. Because I did really want to make a unmodded Starship, a just generic stock one so that everyone who has this game is able to actually create this rather than having to go and delve for mods. Obviously that does mean that we are going to be lacking things like grid fins and well that's really the only additional mod that I have that will add stuff to this build and there are also some extra engines that are now modded into the game and regular visitors to my channel will know that I do enjoy messing around with mods quite a lot. I am definitely a keen modded KSP player. I've even started doing a weekly, well I was doing a weekly mod showcase for Kerbal Space Program 2. I'm now going to be changing that to a monthly one. That does pain me a little bit to say but it does give the mods a little bit more time to breathe and it gives me more content to cover when I do release those videos. And also I have had some in real life things going on recently. <laughs> you may have noticed I've not uploaded for three weeks. Anyway, the Starship was plenty capable of getting to orbit. But we don't want to know if Starship can just get to orbit, no, we want to see if we can land it at one of the four landing pads back at the Kerbal Space Center. Ideally, at the Kerbal Space Center would be ideal. Unfortunately, my first attempt at doing this fell a little bit short, but the Starship does perform remarkably. It flies well, it can belly flop, and it touches down rather safely in the ocean before deciding to dance because it's quite happy that it's made it down. So if you're a better pilot than me, or if you're more accurate than me, you absolutely could land this at one of the pads in its current configuration. Okay, stock vessel now completely done. We've proven that we can get it to orbit and we can somewhat land it, although that was a rather bad landing. Now on to the modded part of this video and the mod that I will be using in order to get the grid fins that I am going to be using and the Ripter engines, yes, they're not called Raptors, no, is called Sorry. I have covered that before in a mod showcase. It is a brilliant mod. It was the first ever parts mod for Kerbal Space Program 2 and it basically adds reusable rocket parts such as grid fins, SpaceX style engines, and nose cones that have built-in RCS pods. And since I last covered it, it has had many, many updates, and I would highly recommend you go and check it out if you do not already know about the mod. However, I was running into a little bit of a problem using the Ripters on the first stage here, as can be apparent on the screen. I have 33 of them, and according to MicroEngineer, which is a mod that will tell me my current thrust-to-weight ratio, well, I should be getting 1.7, and yet I seem to be falling down to the ground. We are not going up today. No, we are not going to make it to space. So unfortunately, even though they look like raptors and I can fit 33 of them onto the first stage, I am going to have to go back to using 19 vectors. It's not quite as accurate as I would have liked this to have been, but at least it does work. I will be mentioning this to Lux and I'm sorry Lux that I've not mentioned this before this video releases. I really just wanted to get this out, but there are a whole host of things it could be. It could be microengineer not reading the values correctly or it could be some sort of weird thrust blocking issue having those engines all super close to each other. But it's not the end of the world. We have the vectors. Strut everything! And then finally we are going to be actually launching the modded Starship and this is almost identical to the last launch I did except this time we have a couple of fancy grid fins on the side and I also do have the Ripters as the Starship engines. One thing that I forgot to do was to extend the grid fins for the duration of this flight. I am fair fairly certain, I might be wrong, but Starship, when it launches, has the grid fins extended at all times. Now, I could have done this by hitting B and making sure that the brakes action group were always activated, but I forgot. <laughs> I am, I am silly, okay? Oh god, realistic Starship, and I have done so many things wrong over the course of this video. I'm really struggling to get content out as it is, and it's, it's, it's been quite difficult. It's been a while since I've done any of these videos, and I would have liked to have got this more accurate, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, this is the best you're going to get. I, I have been spending far too long on this video. I, there was another video that I was working on as well that I'm not sure if I will be able to get out now. And to be honest, it is another Starship video. I've missed the deadline for Starship. I wanted to get this video out on Thursday when Starship actually launched. And I, I clearly missed that. It's Saturday. It, well, it will be Saturday, hopefully by the time this video comes out. But anyway, this Starship is more than capable of getting to orbit. And I did leave a little bit of fuel left in the first stage. And that's because I have made the world's worst Mechazilla 
power ever. Yes, it's it's really bad. You really don't want to see it. It took me a while to drive it to the landing pad, but I wanted to see if I could land the Starship booster at the Mechazilla with the amount of fuel that I had left. Now, I didn't refilm this. This is actually something I did way before the updated Starship that I made for this video, but I wanted to show that it is possible to get this booster back to the landing pads and attempt to catch it rather badly. Yes, that didn't go very well. So the super heavy landing went badly. What about the Starship la- Yeah, no, we've flown right past the Space Center. I very roughly estimated how far away I was from the Space Center with the first one. That landed in the ocean just after the desert, so it was some way short, so I took that away from my trajectory for this one, and for some reason that made me completely overshoot. The weird thing about this one though is I did exactly the same descent profile. I had it pitched up at 20 degrees the entire way, which was how I did it first. I just, I'm honestly, I don't understand why it overshot quite so much. It is something that maybe I'll work on at a future point. Maybe I'll try and eventually get it done, get it landed at the Space Center. I mean, it's, it's pretty damn cool to do. But anyway, the engines have fired up yet again for a propulsive landing, and this is how you make a good-looking Starship in Kerbal Space Program 2. Not sure if I can really call it realistic anymore, if I'm honest. A big thanks to Levi Stauffer, Mr. Blue Star, Hentium, Shadow Dev, So Not The Hero Type, Sunset Awesome, That Unreal Guy, Zaretya, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnasa, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later.